Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm going to fly from Stockholm to Helsinki in an SE-2010. And this is the interior. It's a freeware plane, uh, so at least it has a virtual cockpit. But uh, outside it's looking pretty spiffy. Uh, this is an airliner from the late 40s. It's got four WASP major engines, so basically it's sort of like an operated uh, B-29. It can carry, it doesn't look that big, but it can actually carry 60 to 160 people. Now this is the more luxurious uh, situation where they actually have sleepers inside. So uh, yeah, it's probably just 60 people and then they have uh, sleeping arrangements and all that. And unfortunately it did not get very far uh, because of course the jet age came about and it wasn't very fast at all. But uh, yeah, anyway, so this is an interesting plane. This is freeware and so available on the forums, uh, the xplane.org forum. And of course, we are going to be continuing with the Apollo 12 audio. Uh, they were still getting ready for their second EVA on the surface, I believe. I don't think we actually got them out of the hatch yet. Let me uh, take a listen. It's been a while since I did the previous flight, so. Okay, a little bit of flaps and we'll get started. Across to the other side. Oh, it's out of your way. Oh, I think, uh, you know, he had just stepped out. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Al, before egress, would you confirm yeah. that the TV circuit so, breaker is out? Uh, Pete Conrad is out and Al Bean is getting out. out. Roger. Okay, here we go. It is out, Houston. Roger, Al. Okay. Flight to Helsinki is 216 nautical miles. Oop. Not a wheel squeal. Actually, you can see from the runway that this is very uh, big. Oh, my friendly Noman. Oh, uh, thanks to the activity yesterday, I forgot all about him sitting here. Sort of got a B-29 tail, too. A little bit nicer looking than uh, Boeing 377, though. Got SRC, too. Okay. Sorry, configuring my map here. We are going south right now. We should fly over Stockholm again this okay, time. Check all the circuit breakers and I'll be out with you. Okay. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's better. All right, just was trying to get trimmed out here. Uh, actually, let's continue going south so we do fly over Stockholm. Stockholm is directly south of here. Roger, Pete. We copy that comment. Uh, any clarification? Yeah, they uh, tend to uh, have fatigue failures along the cracks when you go to open them up. I noticed the two bags that I put in the SRC yesterday were that way. And let me get back here just a second. Let's see. PSLAC, TP transfer, geology, but still on HTC, contra, charge extension, handle, hammer, small shovel, and Nolan. Here I come, Pete. Okay, have fun. Place SRC2 on Mesa, attach way bag to scale, attach that bag to LMP. Just one thing that bothers me, I don't have a saddle bag. Wonder Hey, I don't. Might benefit from I more reflections. Like PBR uh, stuff. I mean, uh, Otherwise the exterior looks pretty good. good. Check. Okay. Keep coming. Super good shape. There you go, a little left. Hey, let me
we take a look inside the cockpit, it doesn't have a red line or anything like that. I'm taking a look at the information about it. It says cruise speed 240 knots, maximum speed 310. Roger, beep. Looking down, son, it's still a same old ash gray, very light white ash gray. Okay, I'll have to open the pen. Okay, I'll have to. About, uh, oh, the wind is against us. A uh, surveyor parts bag here. Alright, second beam. Alright, normal buzzers. Huh? I'm gonna pull down those little side buzzers. It ain't there, uh, Houston, uh, I think Al and I both find that these uh, little side sun visors are extremely handy. Roger, Pete, we copy. I think I'll Congrats skip down. going directly over Stockholm. It's a bit out of our way, and the plane is not that fast. But we can see the waterway there, leading out of Stockholm, basically a delta of some kind from the Malaren Lake. The best time we have for Alpine on the surface is 131.48.44. That's the same. What's it? Set that uh, line right there, Pete. Say again? I'm going to set the uh, tether right there, and okay? So, you know... Put it on you here, Pete. How's that? Is that... You want me to stand alone? Oh, I sense clouds. No, no. Okay, okay we, we'll uh, level out a little bit low. Good. Initially. They got that one on. On the side? So we don't get in the midst of the clouds there. You know, other than the large size rock, very, very difficult to determine a contact around here. city we're over right now is Akersburga, or Akersburga, probably Akersburga. Hey Houston, that calm is super, it sounds like you're right inside my helmet. Roger, that's the same we've had. I wonder what happened since yesterday. Lots of islands, I joke that uh, every person could get an island at this yeah, rate. I think everybody learned. All okay. these tiny little I things. Bags on there. Let's see what else. I need to get the tool. Oh, we're going up again. And before you put the tool in, we gotta cut a TV cable. That's affirmative. Uh, cut the TV cable below the adapter, about one inch. And then, that's uh, one foot below the adapter, and then stow the TV camera in the ETB. <laughs> Hey, look at that surveyor, Al. That's not anywhere near as bad a slope. It's oh, a bit shape. Hey, Houston, that surveyor looks a lot better today. Yeah, now that the sun's up in the sun, there's a green cable cut. Oh, wait a minute, leave it right on there for a second. Come on over, put the thing in my back, and let's mount our cameras, and then the ETB is in. All right, sounds good. Or either that, bring it back, I'm sorry. It's okay. Doesn't make a difference. What do you think? Yeah. I think you got that right here. You got the right idea, that's the lunar walk. Okay. Stick it in here. Look at that part number on the side of the tool. <laughs> Here's 
get a few turns. Hey, Houston, uh, while he's putting the tool on, uh, it's a very interesting thing. There is a uh, angular rock that's literally six inches from the engine exhaust skirt. It's just sitting on the on the lunar surface. And I really find it hard to believe that the engine exhaust could blow that rock away. It's only about three and a half inches by three and a half inches. And it's not stuck in the ground. It's just sitting there loosely about six inches from the engine bell. And of course the ground is blasting clean all the way around it. And it, it yet the engine exhaust blast didn't blow that rock away. Pete, where's the saddlebag? Hunter Pete, we copy that comment. Were you able to get a photo of that in the first EVA? <laughs> Well, we'll get that right now. Um, is there one in here, Al? Yeah. Oh. And Pete, now, for your uh, reference on the photos, your shadow length now is 18 foot. Okay. There's a couple of sneaky bags first. Okay, looking pretty Al, good here. Also, if you would, before you start that traverse, would you get a good photo of the solar wind to show us how that uh, foil is wrapped around? Well, do. Okay, Houston, that won't take a second. Okay, let me attach this bag to, uh, would you attach this bag to me, Pete? Yeah. I want to slide that off at the same time. After Helsinki, I'm planning to go to Tallinn on a fairly short flight between Helsinki and Tallinn. That'll be in a Yak 18T, a freeware plane that's pretty darn good. Camera. Here's the saddlebags on. If you put one camera on, look at those little. Go get the TV. I'll mount this other gear on here. My compliments to the man that packed that SRC box. It looks just like training boxes. Give me those tongs a second. Yes, sir. Here's the tongs. Last time I went to you? Tallinn, though, uh, there were scenery issues, so hopefully I've got them Hold fixed. Let me see what this is. That's what's left of uh, okay, got you. those parts back. I got you. So many waterways. I mean, not just this one, but there's sort of a delta thing up ahead there, too. And there seems to be a problematic patch there too, that sandy bit to the left of our nose. Come on, get out of there. Otherwise the photo scenery is looking spiffy. I didn't know better, I'd say there was solar wind up here. That blows hard enough to blow sample bags in the wrong direction. Honestly, even though I'm full throttle, we're not. We can't accelerate much beyond 200 knots, it looks like. The cruise speed, of course, would be at 20,000 feet. That's 240 knots. We're not that far away from that, even at this level. But yeah, obviously not fast enough to be a premier airliner of its time. Uh, odd line there so too. The okay, let's try prepared. to ignore that. Yes, sample tube coming up. Okay. Now I need to get that safety line. Okay, I'll put that over here. Okay, I'll get the safety line. Yeah. On safety line. Come up, excuse me. Okay. I'll put my camera on, we'll put the TV camera in ETB and away we go. 
on that. Uh, press on uh, the nominal plan right now. Here, let me have it. Okay, let me fill the handle. handle, yeah. Hold it tight. I got it as far as I can. Pete, we have no uh, preference on that. Go ahead and uh, take it as called out for in the cuff checklist. Okay, we're heading out over this particular stretch of the Baltic Sea. And our plan of attack is, uh, Al, go. One picture of that rock under the descent stage. Grab the hand tool carrier and head for the solar wind and grab a picture of that. That's sort of a classic shading, I feel. To the ALSAP and check the size. I'll meet you at point one at head crater. Roger, we copy, and uh, Al, have you uh, gotten the readings on the contrast charts? Not yet, and uh, I plan to do that real quick. Roger. Houston, Pete's on his way to the LSAP. Roger, Al, we copy. And at uh, 30 minutes into the EVA, you're pretty close to the nominal timeline. Okay, very good. This plane's empty weight is actually less than the Lockheed Super Constellation, the L1049G. It has more powerful engines, 3,500 horsepower compared to 3,250 horsepower. It has less speed. <laughs> uh, but it has more carrying capacity. Its max takeoff weight is higher because of the bigger engines, of course. Um, but yeah, somehow it manages to have less speed. The Super Constellation can go 295 knots cruise speed. And the Connie also has a longer range. I would really like a model of the Constellation. Pete, uh, we're watching you down here on the seismic data. It looks as though you're really thundering right by it. There's a freeware one. But it's not yeah, spectacular. I, uh, I grabbed a halt there to switch to uh, intermediate cooling. I noticed that. Uh, oh, uh, need to go a little bit further south. It is obviously a little bit hotter out here with the higher sun angle right now. Okay, I'm approaching the infamous side. Roger, and uh, we're able to copy your rest, and now that you're moving again. Okay. All right. The status is. Look, I don't want to get dust in it. The cover is off, and it's pointed up at the sky at about a 60 degree angle. Roger, uh, do not touch it right now, Pete. Um, which way is that uh, pointing relative to uh, east west? It is pointed. Down sun. Roger. The land you see up ahead is an island. Need, uh, no need to change the configuration. Let's press on. And it is finished, so we're about to cross into finished waters. We that you've stopped on the seismic. Yeah. There's the handy dandy LMP. Contrast tree. Oh, okay. Meet you at the head crater, pal. Okay. Oh boy, I, I, I want that rock. There is a dandy 
Extra grapefruit size type goodie. <laughs> I'm sure the geologists uh, were simultaneously amused and frustrated by their description of the rocks. <laughs> okay, Houston, I'm approaching a crater now, and I'm gonna put the contrast chart in it. One on each side, one on the sunny side, one on the shadow side. Okay. Has a tendency to go left. I'll add a little bit of aileron trim. Hey, there's the one on the sunny side. And if I got the grapefruit rock, I'm all grapefruit rocks. That's got to come home in the spacecraft when they were sitting in rock box. Okay, Houston, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wind up at the right place and head crater, and while I'm waiting for Al, I'll roll a boulder for you. Sounds good. Uh, Looking at uh, the continent. Pete, uh, uh, Houston, can you give us a mark when you roll over? Um, yeah, I sure will. Uh, it crater is, by golly, a rather steep crater. A lot steeper than it looks from out the lamp. It's Houston? Yeah, go. I'm looking at the contrast chart in the sun, and I can see all the different shades. Sounds like some other Capcom is talking to uh, the command module separately. It depends on how close I am. If I'm uh, within about uh, three feet of it, or four feet of it, I can see all six shades. I'll take a picture here, and then I'll back up. Let me ask you a question, Houston. How big a rock? Uh, Pete, Houston, uh, I presume uh, whatever's a convenient size for you. Uh, we'll check that out, though. <laughs> How about a grapefruit-sized rock? I'm going <laughs> to hold it in my hand. And, and these other rocks that I was talking to you about are well buried and they're pretty large. I don't think I could get one of them going. Houston? Roger, uh, we copy uh, grapefruit size or any size is fine. That's a good look right there. It is okay, sort of a wide yeah. body design. Al, are you standing still? Compared to Al, the sure constellation, okay, for I'm instance. I'm standing still. Houston, on my mark, I'm going to roll it. Mark. It starts down. Hit, hit, Hip, hip, hip. Now it's just rolling. Roll, roll, roll. Still rolling. Roger, Pete. Uh, we've got some uh, jiggles that I can see here. Uh, we'll get a reading on it for you. So this is called Fasta Island. Maybe Fasta Island. Maybe that means. Very slowly, still rolling. And it stopped. Mark, stop. Okay, Houston, uh, I'm looking at the uh, contrast chart in the shadow. And, uh, I don't know why the plane is so shadow. I guess somehow there are clouds up. casting a shadow on the plane uh, and not on the ground. Feet. I don't know. Uh, as long as I've been it's confusing. Here a moment and uh, tap my eyes, I can see all six also. Now, the thing that seems to have the biggest effect on it is how low the sun is. The sun is high now, and so I don't have to squint my eyes, particularly looking in that direction. Yesterday, looking into the same crater, even though it wouldn't be any darker in there because the sun was there, I, I would never be able to do that. Right now, I can see all six marks, and I've taken the photograph. I'm going to go out and do solar wind now. Roger, Al. Uh, visibility, uh, visibility here is uh, on Earth, really. You uh, adapt just as well, and uh, the only major difference I've noticed is the fact that when you're out here on these, uh, this area, if you look cross sun, the moon appears one color. If you look down sun, it's another. If you look up sun, it's another. But uh, looking into uh, shadows or anything else like that, pretty much the uh, same as on Earth. Copy that, Al. Okay, I'll take some pictures here of the solar wind for you. Back to 
doesn't look as pronounced uh, wrapped around the pole now that I get out here, Houston. There's an airport there. It's, uh, Maryham Airport, and that like city is day. or town is called Maryham Hammond. Marie Hammond, M A R I E, and an H A M N. Anything unusual going on there? Uh, Roger, uh, Al, and uh, Pete, uh, if it's convenient and you can find another rock there and give her a heave uh, experiment, sure would like to see another one. Once again, one of those interesting places to live. Okay, I was. Uh, setting up my uh, black hole and uh, all that good things for the polarizing light. And uh, I'm looking at a rock that has all crystals in it. Oh, clouds. See, from this angle, you can sort of see there are clouds making things gloomy. Uh, but no, the clouds are definitely accumulated. We got shadows on the aircraft long before uh, the clouds actually appeared, it seems. I'll get lower. Canvas bag came loose. It took me about two minutes to put it back together again. It came off the metal side. And it looks like those clips that hold it on are going to be completely inadequate. And I expect that we're going to have some trouble with it all day today. I'll be honest. Think about fixing it before next time. Roger, Al, we copy that. Do you think once you put a little weight in it, she'll hold better? I don't know. They don't. The, uh, they don't seem to have a lot of friction. Uh, on the sides there, and the bag just floats around it. It needs to be more firmly attached some way. Roger. Okay. Between this uh, Fasta oh, Island and the main part of Finland, there there's sort of a veil of islands. Lots of these guys. Just in this sort of part, as if it was all connected. I don't know how deep this water is. Just 
That's right, exactly. This is a very small crater, Houston. Probably about three feet in diameter. And it looks like it was made at not very uh, uh, fast moving or energetic or heavy projectile. Yet right in the middle of the hole is uh, some of these uh, glass covered uh, rock fragments. And, uh, and some of the other rocks that seem to be resting in the hole, I'm putting them all in, in a uh, sample bag one here, I mean, some of the others don't have any coating on them at all. I'm picking them up with the tongs, but I can't tell how strong they are, but they, they, don't, seem, they don't seem to hold together too well. They seem kind of weak. There you go. I'll head on over where Pete is. Roger, we copy that. If you're going to document that, try to get some of the material around the uh, glass as well as the glass itself. Okay, I want to... I'll just get this as a bonus. I want to get over and start working with Pete as a team here. Roger. I just didn't want to have to try to remember where that was. You're going to get a big surprise when you look into this head crater, Al. It's a heck of a lot deeper than it looked, eh? Nice uh, white small crater with white rim on it. Got a five foot diameter one. I've been concentrating Houston as I uh, came uh, walking over here to Head Crater to see if there were any uh, possible changes in either texture, slope, uh, color, anything you could think of or anything that I could think of that would say to me that I was walking on a different surface than I was when I started. And uh, I just haven't seen a thing yet. It all looks the same. It all looks like it's covered with this uh, well, uh, black uh, rock. Don't, okay. don't, don't take dust in the middle of my polarized picture area. Yeah, I'll stop right here. Okay. Put the tool carrier again and get uh, get your upfront pictures. You see where my footsteps are? That, that rock that's half buried and the two rocks that I've turned over in my footsteps? Yeah. Okay, it's 15 feet F11, two shots. Now, uh, you're not going to get the before, unfortunately. Okay, how about right? I'm going to have my shadow here or over there. No, that's the pile right there. See where, my, see where I turned over the two rocks alongside the great big rock and my foot tracks are? Oh, yeah, way down at the end. No, right here. I'll walk over to it. That's a good idea. We're about halfway through the flight. This rock pile right here. Oh, okay. Want me to shoot it from right here? Yeah, and you're in 15 feet back up. You're in yeah, see if I can sure go a little bit higher. 15 feet. Okay, it ought to be about F11. Okay. It would have been nice to have a Saab Viggen to fly or any, any of the fighter jets to fly on this route, but uh, I did not have one. And that's why I have the Sobvigan in okay, DCS world, of course. Got a couple pictures there, Houston. Let me tell you what my uh, I'm sort of a plane collector in flight sims, in that uh, if I don't have one in one flight sim, I have a yeah, hankering Houston, to get in another uh, one. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, fifteen pictures. Copy fifteen, Pete. Okay, and on my mark, I'm going to send a slightly smaller rock into the crater. Are you ready? Roger, we're watching. Mark. Uh, I didn't quite kick it hard enough. Wait one, I'll do it again. And Houston, the, that sample bag that I put the fragments in that I mentioned earlier that I found in the bottom of that small crater. Mark. Uh, that's sample bag 1D. Copy your mark, Al. Repeat, and uh, 1D on that sample bag. I actually have the you know, old the IL-2 1946 60, they, game with a mod that adds an obscene number of aircraft to it. Don't go Roger, Pete. Uh, we haven't been able to pick it up on the PSE here. It takes like 60 gigabytes. Okay, it was too small a rock. Take the filter off the front of my camera. Okay, let me set this down. Not quite as visually appealing, uh, though. And you might want to take the video tools in a second. Okay. Where's your camera? Got 
filter's off. Okay. That's it. To the filter. Good if that thing goes. Directly against the, the wind. Uh, corner of head crater they wanted us to work. Okay. And we can work right here and up to the top of it. If what uh, what corner is this? We're in the northwest corner. Okay. Right? As I indicated on the map. Okay. Okay, now I don't want to get any dirt in this thing. That's pretty interesting. Okay. A little secondary impact crater, huh? Okay, you want me to step uh, down the here? No, I'll, I'll get the cross sun. Right? But you got also got to be careful with this uh, tool carrier. You said, did you want to put the Norman in, Pete? Oh, yeah. Let me have my tool. Okay. Fight one. Here's your uh, grabber. Roger, Al, we copy that comment. And on the northwest rim, we're looking for two partial pans. Okay, that's All right. right. We'll get them. Dang little. Okay, let, wait, let me get uh, my pictures, Pete. Okay. Let me get over here and get the gnomon in. For example, this rock right here. This rock is very uh, typical of all the fragments around here. Okay. Hey, that's interesting. Look where you kicked. That's some lighter uh, material there. Oh, I sure did, didn't I? Yeah, that's the that's first time we've seen that. Now, in fact, you know what it looks like here? It looks like it may be uh, this darker material. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to photograph that, too. Let me get okay. Let me get this. Yeah, yeah, Houston, kind of interesting here. Pete uh, walked across one edge of the rim here. We're about, oh, 50 feet inside the, the upper rim. And he uh, happened to scrape an area there with his foot into a uh, much lighter colored um, uh, soil, uh, like cement. Yeah. Let me take Picture. Roger, Al. Just endless here. islands. Uh, we're coming close to the main coast that, here. Oh, we're getting close to the clouds. Okay. Um, Al, to our left, once we reach the coast, will be the city okay. of Turku. Drop the gnomon in right here over my foot. Apologies if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I probably am. And we can trench there. Okay, but we're not quite there yet. But that's where we're approaching. 3D, yeah. In just a second. Okay. Let's see. 5 feet F8 or 250. Some, but there's quite a bit more over here on the west for some reason. 
If they can go out, turn on your Cephalonian and help me. Okay. Roger, we copy that. Look at We copy that. Okay. Look at that. Stick it right in that white soil with the brown, huh? There. There you go. Now, let me trench it. Okay. We get some photos of that. Okay, look, you can see where you dug in that there's still some underneath. Why don't you give me another scoop right in there? Okay. Good idea. There's not much in there. Okay. Well, Pete digs up. Uh, sure enough, right underneath the uh, surface, uh, you'll find some uh, much lighter gray uh, oil. I don't exactly know uh, why it's this point. And you can look around now and see several places where we've walked. The same things occurred. We never have seen this at all. Uh, oh, that's going to make a good picture, Pete. Never seen this at all out there in the area we were before. Hey, that looks nice. Roger, Al, we copy that. You think it could be the sun angle? Listen. No, not at all. This is definitely a change to a, a light gray. As you go down and the deeper peak goes, he's down about four inches. Now it still remains this light gray. It's... Uh, this soil must be of a different makeup than that we were on uh, outside the crater because we have to hey, this is yeah, different than around the spacecraft because know. we've kicked up all kinds of stuff around the spacecraft and it's all the same color. Top and bottom, this is quite a bit different. This soil looks like it... I think what we should do here, Pete, but... Once we reach Turku, I'll follow the highway into Helsinki. Right the bottom, this will something new. I'll put it in sample bag number... Uh, I'm getting lower here. Hey, Al, we copy 5D, and would you give your uh, location relative to the center of head crater? Specifically, are you just uh, on the west side of it where we have the triple crater? We're on, we're on the northwest corner of it, right where you told us to go, Houston. Roger, you should be very close to that triple crater. Well, there, Pete. Triple uh, crater. Well, there's one crater. There's, right there's a couple of craters right over the rim here. We're, we're sort of in the rim. Peach down now about, uh, that's not a good one, Alan. I think you know what. Down about six inches and, uh, look, just light gray down there. Now, in the bag, you'll find there's some darker gray material that fell in off the side. There you go. Hey, I want to, let's throw this little rock in that I dug up from down deep. Is that a rock? Yes, sir. Okay, get another sample back. All right, that's a good one, because no, wait, let me get a picture of it first. I dug it up out of the hole. It's hard, hard to keep the soil in the bag. Stereo pier. You know. <laughs> okay, in uh, the There's, of course, a little of the topsoil mixed in because the sides collapsed. Angle of repose is about 85 degrees, but uh, yeah. the minute you bump the side, it falls in. It's not the, the cohesive at all, even though it, it uh, seems to remain nearly vertical. I guess it's the low gravity. Hey, that's a nice rock. <laughs> it's uh, it right. to be a rock from the bottom of the hole, and it's covered in the gray. I can't see uh, anything in it other than just the gray uh, uh, dirt covering, soil covering. Let me get a final shot, Pete. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay, as you move off, Pete, every once in a while I can see some white, but most of the time, uh, not there. You kicked, hey, you kicked over a rock that had a uh, white bottom and uh, might have been different to the top. Right behind you, you might want, you might want to take a picture of that. Okay, so the city you see to our left is Turku. We show that you're 58 minutes into the EVA, and we'd like to get you over to uh, Bench Crater and leaving there something on the order of uh, 1 plus 12. Uh, we can slip that a bit. So uh, we suggest you uh, finish up where you are, what you're doing there at head, and move on. Okay, now where's the map? 
Uh, I got the map right here, Pete. Yeah. Let you take a look at this. By the way, this is the smartest idea we came up with. Just in this map just works great out here. Okay, let me take a picture of this rock. I'm gonna. Uh, this isn't gonna show much. Let me let me use your shovel. All right, now I'm trying to find the triple craters you're referring to. Kick it around. Pete, that uh, triple crater is just south of your present position, and uh, why don't you just go ahead and move on? Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, you can see the highway there. It looks to be Highway 1, very appro appropriately named. Um, it's got to okay, head into the capital. And I guess the largest city. Yep. And Just two. had to double check. I'll take another one. Okay, maybe you want it. No, I can, even these rocks out in here, even uh, the ones that are almost completely covered with the soil, if I look at them, I can see glints of crystals or something. Yep, every one of them. All right, let me have that. Very Did shady you know? here. All right, we're going to hit for... Uh, Again, I feel like there are some okay, clouds that aren't rendering, but nevertheless we, there. I'm going to get it when I get to the... Uh, triple craters, which is right over here. Sounds good. They think they're right over here. I can't see them. I gotta look over the hill. Alright? Yeah, here they are. Ho, ho, ho! Those things are quite a bit lighter gray up here on the top of the hill. Yeah. The right appro we're approaching oh, the look, craters, look, at this, look at these craters, Al. Yeah. Wait. Now, uh, do you want head crater from uh, triple craters? Is that what you want, or do you want the triple craters? Pete, we suggest you just move on to bench. And uh, comment on that double core tube. If you find a spot that looks soft, uh, go ahead and sink the double core tube. We'll do it at bench. Okay. Roger. It's really a shame, Houston. We could we could work out here for eight or nine hours. The work is no strain at all. I took three quick pictures of triple craters, Houston. We're not okay, going to get to that other one. Bench is it, but that looks like a real interesting area on the on the far corner of bench, you know? all those big rocks, some of them uh, could be bedrock out of somewhere. But I'm kind of wondering, we're passing up these here, and they got to be bedrock from somewhere. We need to get a pretty large size one here before we leave this area, Pete. I'll tell you what we better do, do it. I'll stop right here and take a pan. Okay, how's that grab you? Because these, these rocks obviously came out of the crater because they're scattered more uniformly around it. There's a bunch up on the rim, and there's not many far away. We probably ought to grab a big one of them. 74. They're moving uh, straight south now. There's an interesting rock. Let's see. That's all right. Let's get it. Let me read your camera and you can read mine if you would. Help them out a bit down there. A minute. Okay, your camera right now is on 36. How about mine? That's 36 also. Okay, move. Did you copy that, Houston? What? Roger, we got it, uh, Al. Every crater you come, every crater you come to and look in, you see the glass beads. Move out of your way, Pete. Right here, I'd like to grab that rock right there because it's got 
kind of a sharp edge on it, and all the rest of them are kind of, it's got kind of an uh, oblique edge on it, and you don't see many like that around Which one? This one right here, this gray one, looks a little bit different than the rest. This one? No, right there, a little bit further out and right there. I'll just grab it and put it in this box if we can pick it up. This one, the big one? The big one. Ho, 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 wait till I get the pictures. Okay. We can do that. We can just put it in the bag. I think that's this is kind of a different looking rock. This rock is different, Houston. Uh, just in the way it's shaped, and it's partly rounded. And the highway and looks a bit raised in this area. <laughs> maybe under all that dirt, it's something a little bit different. Or well, maybe those are just lights, I, I can't tell from this height. Well-rounded, a well-rounded rock. <laughs> That's why I look for in a rock. Roger, we copy That's that? well-rounded. Uh, find any chip from that rock in the near vicinity? Uh, city to our uh, right is Salo. Uh, not unlike all the other rocks around here, Houston. Uh, all the rocks we get on the far side of that. Uh, yeah, let's get that. That's a good idea. Uh, all the rocks we've been looking at, Houston. In this area, seem to be it's the same. They seem to have a uh, the rock has got dirt built up on all sides of it, all directions. Yeah, the shading is a bit weird. Looks about equal. That's right. That might be down to X vision because I don't. Uh, I might need to update that. That it had a previous problem. That was a description of a fillet. A fillet is a rock with uh, soil piled up around the edges. Uh, the surface of it is, of course, pitted. There's some pits that are maybe even up to uh, three-eighths of an inch in diameter on it. However, most of them are small. Uh, it doesn't look like a basalt, although the grains are too small for me to see anything, uh, identify any specific one. Uh, some of the uh, pits have glass in it, which is not... Uh, too surprising, and uh, many of them don't. That's about all we can say about that rock. That's very typical of the, of the ones in the area. Roger, Al, could you give us a sample bag number and uh, then press on? Okay, well, we didn't take a sample there. The couple that we did take a sample of previously are of the same type. So the last couple of samples have been of the same type rock that we're discussing. Okay, Houston, I'm coming up on Bench Crater right now. I like Dawson left now. And I get to a pan in Bench Crater. This looks like a very interesting crater. It's different. Oh, and I see some really different rocks. A big one. Hey, that looks like bedrock. Eee, what a crater. Ow. Oh, boy. Hey, Al, look, come on over here. I'm coming. Gotta get some of this. Let me get some pans in there. Sounds interesting, Al. And Pete sounds as though you're getting down to bedrock. Is that a firm? <laughs> yeah, they gotta be bedrock. And there's one at the bottom. As a matter of fact, boy, there's some big fragments of pictures. It looks to me like stuff is melted in the bottom of it. Like, 
can't swear to that, but I'll get you some pictures. Starting right now. F8. We're halfway between Turku and Helsinki. Uh, not too long now before arriving. Okay, let me go around the other little bit here. Get you a good pan. Yeah, this rock looks pretty much the same from a distance, Houston. Yeah, there's oh. a tip down of this crater. I just saw you guys aren't all here. What a fantastic sight. Al, look at the bottom of that crater. Hey, look at that. You think that stuff melted or what? What's that look like to you? Technically, we're at a higher latitude than Stockholm, but I feel like the landscape looks warmer. I'm not too sure what the climate between uh, Finland and Sweden, how that all shapes up. completely jagged. No, they're not. It's hard to tell. I noticed when I was looking at that rock back here up real close that it had been hit by a meteorite so much, I guess, that it had given it a rounded appearance, something like those in the hole. Except there's a couple over there, like you say, that don't look that way. We gotta grab one of these pieces of rock. Hey, here, here's some good rock samples right here. Come on. Okay, <laughs> these right guys here. are so enthusiastic about rocks. Oh me, I want to cover the ground. <laughs> okay. Well, be careful. Got baloney about it all day long in the LRL. The name of the game is to get the business done. Okay. One potato. Okay, potatoes. There's another one. But that I got baby. That rock looks a little different. Okay. Uh, don't think, I don't think it's going to fit us. Let's put it in one of these bags. It'll fit in there, I think, G. Okay. It's just going to go in sample bag just four. I think it's... What is it? Oops. I'm going to get these booger. It could be four. Might fit in there. I won't fit in there, Pete. The box is too big. Let's just put it in here. And we got a nice picture of it so we can tell where it's That's from. a super rock. Why don't you pick up two or three others little ones and put them in 64 here. Same area. Here. All right. Copy sample 64. The crater. I mean, the... From... Nice rock. Get some here that we took the picture of. Yeah, wait a minute. Okay. I don't think I got that. Okay. May not have. Hey, you notice that... Uh, Underneath this soil on the rim, too, it's the light Got gray. some clouds baked okay. into ground texture, unfortunately. Try get a break off a piece of that big rock. That's, That's a good like idea. Rock to me. You do that, man. Yeah, okay, I'll put 64 in here. Used well, it definitely yeah, looks better at this angle than this shady the, angle. It doesn't, uh, look like they appeared in the photo, but that, uh, won't make any difference. It's just typical of the other rocks around here. Holy Christmas, what's this? Holy Christmas. <laughs> Look at this, Al. You're kicking up the uh, same sort of light gray. Apparently on the rims here, you get that light gray out of the... Uh, no, no, no. Look at this stuff. stuff. Hey, that's interesting. What do you suppose that is? Hey, we came. Here's something interesting, Houston. I don't know, it looks like a surface cone. What we got is what looks like a kind of a semi-buried rock. Hey, there's a small piece of it over there at the left. See it, Pete? We'll be able to catch it and put it in the bag. See that up there? Yeah. What it looks like is a, uh, a very rock, not unlike the others around here, except it appears to have some sort of coating on it. It's very uh, iridescent, a lot of crystal I'll shining in it. I'll tell you what's happened. It, it, it's been laying in the ground and it's been hit by another fragment. Think so? Yeah, look at the glass beads, too. So they're all over the place. I know. Okay, you want, you want to catch that? Now wait over there and I'll put yeah, it. Let me, get the, let me get the sample of it. Okay, sample bag 7L. Copy uh, 7, and would you go ahead and give us some uh, picture numbers also? Okay. I'll give you some just a minute. Pete's picking up a small piece of this rock. Maybe you can get a piece of spot you right off the middle. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. Please. Get out of your way. See it. Let me hand you the scoop. There it is. Right there. Okay. That kind of an interesting coating on it. This is different from what we've seen. Now, maybe this is uh, more newly exposed. 
Did they struck by something? Is that all you want to put in that bag? Listen, they hand me the scoop. Let me get some of those glass beads and stuff there. Uh, the highway seems to go underground for a little bit in this hey. area. Seems uh, to be a tunnel. Been, uh, going, Houston. Yep, on the map it's also a tunnel. Tunnels under under this part. And uh, we'd like you to move on from this crater. Doesn't seem at, uh, that bumpy, so maybe they could, wanted uh, to just keep the trees in place. At the bedrock on the bench. Probably a good thing. Hey, I'm better not put that in here. That's what we wanted to show. Was that. Okay, let me get you another sample bag. Uh, I hate to try and get down the bottom of this cell. It's awful steep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then hold off on that. Don't go ahead. Negative on the uh, request. But, but I'm going to get you... Uh, it's going to get you some of the bedrock. It looks like it's up in the lip here. I mean, All of it looks the same. Uh, we're working on it. Houston, we're working on it. It's 8D. Ridiculous. It happened to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> Let me get you another one. Okay. Uh, the town to our right is Loja. <laughs> what we're putting in here now, Houston, is some soil that's right next to the... Uh, Rock that we previously just got. In fact, he's got a nice fragment of and that. And in front of us is uh, Numella. Oh, Still following feet. Highway 1 here. That thing is barely a week. This fracture's right off. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get some control there, Barry. You're overpowered. It's 1 6 G up here, Houston. You lift something up and then scoop it. When you stop the scoop, it just keeps going up in the air. <laughs> They're having way too much fun. Okay. That in the bag. There you go. We need to put more samples per in the bag. I'm just saying, they can't hardly use those little ones. They won't fit in there any bigger. There, I get it. Okay. Oh, suddenly some quiet. That's unusual. They've been talking pretty much solid the whole time. Oh, there we go. They must have been okay, getting stuff in the bag or whatever. Bedrock. Like bedrock to me. Okay. Looks a lot like the fragments. We've been seed playing all over the place, but this stuff obviously. I'd say we have a total of about three pounds of rocks right now. Okay, I'm with you. That's not enough. Some, uh, they need more rocks. Okay, we can see Helsinki from here. The urbanized area in front of us there. Al, Houston, over. Hey, Al, we'd like you to go to intermediate flow for a minute and a half. We'll give you a call. Okay, what's the problem? We're looking at a slightly lower than nominal uh, feed water pressure. Okay. Hey, cool and real fine. Look at the glass all over those rocks. Yeah, I need to... <laughs> I want to break this back. Look at it. Okay. Okay, let me put this right in there. I can tell it's going to fall. There you go. I'll hold it. It is interesting how much okay. Mission Control is intent on monitoring in real time and how that's just not possible on a Mars trip, for instance, compared to the moon. Right there. But a takeoff, it's got spattered glass or something all over it. 
let's take it, why don't we take a big piece of it? And, uh, sample bags. The problem with these sample bags, whether they're the, le the round ones or the square ones, or the flat ones, they're all the same size. But you need a sample bags, little ones for these, and, uh, Big ones for the bigger Seems racks. like it'll be okay as far as okay, the frame rates, uh, at least by my standards. We're approaching the city of Espoo, uh, which is obviously a suburb of Helsinki. And uh, on your way out, would you get that partial pan with a 75 foot baseline? So this area is Espoo. A lot of uh, smaller names in the area as well. Don't know what to designate them. Towns, neighborhoods, districts, not sure. No, oh, things are getting stickier. Okay. What's your next pleasure? I don't know. What do you think, Houston? You're looking in good shape. Uh, you can press on along the traverse over to uh, Sharp Crater. So our airport is okay. EFHK, this one. Bonta. I think I'll oh, yeah. just... Oh, we're actually pretty oh, high. Alright, let's turn about, uh, towards the city center and west. drop down here. Before actually trying to approach the airport. We'll come from the other side. Four hundred feet southwest. All right, now we want to get the core tube and the gas sample and a uh, bunch of good things, right, Houston? That's affirmative, uh, Pete. All those good things. Or maybe I'll just sharp. make a big loop here. Because right in front of us, there is the city center of Helsinki. Al, you can go ahead and uh, put that diverter valve to your choice. Your uh, feed water pressure is holding even. Looks as though it's working well. It's slightly lower than nominal. Okay, Houston. Carp Crater, where are you? Fairly sprawling. Got a pinpointed peak? No, I can't find it. Oh, let's go. Let's get some more buildings. There we go. Right. I'm looking down zero phase, you know, and that's... There it is. I remember, that's there is an right Olympic there. Stadium, I think. I see it. Maybe that's what there we see there. Um, yeah, I think that's a whole Olympic com the complex there. I sure do. Good boy. <laughs> right in front of us. Oh, that's not it either. Why don't we stop here and look at the chart a little bit more closely? And obviously, and uh, train lines, harbor. Yeah, I tell you what, I better get a tie anyhow. Look Good looking chart. place. Okay. okay. Roger, you're going to give us a backside survey at that point, Pete? Okay. Yeah. Going for a loop around. I get a full pan. Darn far out, I might as well. Okay, a full pan over when you get to Sharp. We show your uh, 1 plus 2, 3 into the EVA, and we're looking to leave uh, Sharp Crater around 1 plus 5, 1, so you got uh, lots of time. I got a fine shot. I kind of agree with you. Where is it? I don't know. We should be right here. I got a... How big is Sharp Crater? <laughs> well, it's pretty small. It looks to me to be about 30 meters. Okay, I got it. It's right here in front of me. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I see it. so. It's a mini crater. Easy to miss. But then again, 30 meters is not much, and if it's... It's, it's like a <laughs> mild pit that they're calling a crater. Of course. You know, I'm sure something impacted on it, otherwise there's no way to form it, but still. Back. Back at yours. This has got to be 
graveyard crater right here. Let's we'll drive that double core tube in there. All right. Yeah, this got a nice white rim with white rim on it. In fact, the rim of this looks pretty much like the area we kicked over on the previous craters. I'm not sure this is sharp crater, but it's let's <laughs> use it anyway because there's only one out here. I know I can see nothing down here. It's the darndest thing I ever saw. I guess from overhead. We're estimating a uh, diameter of Sharp Crater Pete for about uh, 40 feet. 40 feet? Oh, geez, that's nothing. That's 13 meters. That'd be it. Got a nice raised rim on it. Yeah, look at that. That's raised up about, what'd you say, two feet? And trouble is, I'm running zero feet. Two feet. Oh, yeah, look at that. Is the rim of the crater. All that uh, subsurface material. It's awful soft in here, watch it. Holy Look at the yeah, I imagine there are a lot of things that are more evident from overhead than on the ground. Blast effect coming out of it. Looks like it's got blast effect radio all the way around. This has got to be fairly fresh to the... Look at that, Al. Isn't that neat? Like, we might get some pictures of that. Okay. I don't know what to set it on. 74, I guess. It's not that far away. Boy, the, the rim is soft here, isn't it? There is quite a bit softer than the others, but look at the radial spray pattern. Look at that. I guess I'm supposed to drive a what? Double core tube here, sir? I set that baby up. This is Highway 1 again. Look at that. Skip. We got a big a trench. trench Al, we'd like to get the trench site sample there, and uh, you can hold off on that double core tube until you get over to Halo Crater. Okay. Do we have air brakes? No. I would be hoping for too much. Now we're supposed to look left for Copernican Lane here, too. All right, time to so head no into the cockpit, I feel. I, Contact-wise, you agree, Al? There's no way. Now, this one is fresh enough so that you can see, like you say, some of the rays. But any crater older than this, there doesn't appear to be any way to tell the material from inside the crater from that that was uh, there when, uh, I mean, right on the surface before the crater was formed. There's no, uh, there's no uh, differentiation at all. Uh, let's see, which sample do you want now? Hey, Al, we're looking for the uh, trench site sample. That includes the environmental sample, the trench, and the uh, gas analysis you could put in there, too. Okay, okay gear is down. The one right in the crater rim, that's what it says. That's affirmative. That would be uh, perhaps the easiest and the best place to do it. And you can get that one core tube. We are low, but that's better than being high. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, Pete, before you do that, how, you're going to have to lift this up so that I can take the sample out. 8-1, okay, be right with you. Okay, you're going to do it right there? Okay, lift it up and I'll, I'll reach in there and grab the... Get the this will be the one for the soil here. But one thing I've noticed, used them carrying the uh, the tools, and uh, but uh, although your gloves, you don't feel any of the temperature here. Buds out nice and bright, but it's nice and cool in here. Except when you're carrying something metal, like the hand tool carrier or the shovel or something, then your hand starts to get warm. Did you, did you get out of the? Uh, yeah, I'll let you just slide a little bit. Okay, let me slide right over here. That's a new one. Okay, you're looking oh, good. Wait a minute, I'm gonna do it over here. <laughs> Got it. Hey, Houston. Pete, go ahead. You take a picture before Al. Yeah. No? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, nothing, Houston. We're okay. I'll take one right now, Pete. That's a good spot right there, I believe. Okay, go ahead, Pete. Wow. I really need the vertical there. speed Good indicator job. too. There we Get go. Down about eight in there. Each digging in the uh, digging a nice wait, 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 wait. Let me get the trench pictures. Okay. And I'm okay, Al, could we have some uh, numbers along with those pictures? Okay, we'll have to get them through the Houston. We've been uh, delinquent there.
fine gray, very fine soil here. Okay, now. Okay, I'm ready to, to take a look at my, what's the number? Okay, you're on number 105. Now, that's okay, well, I'll trade cameras with you because you've been there on the 50. Okay. Okay. All right, I think the stall speed is less than 90 knots for this. Pete, we're, we copy you're on 105. Be careful now. We copy you. Hey, man, wait. Oh, dude, it didn't go in. That's okay. It's stuff is really funny. Now I can't see the trench. Uh, I know you can't. That's a uh, boy. Those are interesting uh, buildings right there, it, it, to the it, right. Try to tap it. Maybe come Gosh. You gotta come this way. Okay. Then spot those. Well, enough. Maybe when we take off for the next flight. God, I get a better look at that. I wonder if they're real buildings or whether that's Autogen sort of thing. I doubt it's Autogen. Those are weird buildings. That's the game. That's the game. Yeah, I'll lock it up of it that way. <laughs> They'll need some more. Yeah. One more scoop out to do it, though. Ah, that's soft. Watch yourself, you're getting close to the crater. It's a bit <laughs> bumpy, not. this runway. Yeah, now, want to do one more? That's it. Okay. One more and you'll make it. <laughs> Uh, just, uh, okay. Like, yeah, very bumpy. Brakes. Uh, looks like we're slow enough to take this taxiway. Very good. So, welcome to Helsinki. Oh, let me get that camera. Oh. Can I help you with that? Wait, wait, wait. Brakes. I wanted to go this way. Okay. Ah, uh, so graceful on the landing and then. Oh, okay, okay, stop. Just stop. Yeah, let go. I got it. Hey, you put the lid on. All right. All right. Let me pause the audio there. And we've arrived at Helsinki. I'll have to do a better job of taxiing at this point. Uh, next flight will be to Estonia and uh, look forward to that with the Yak 18T. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.